we had on the flight data recorder was at 900 feet MSL. The accident site is 650 feet MSL, give or take. That's not exact. Uh, we do know Buffalo's uh, field elevation is 725 feet. The accident was somewhere in the vicinity of 60, 650 feet. We'll have more exact information on that uh, as the FBI finishes their documentation for us. The uh, last plot we had was at 900 feet MSL, and it was uh, the heading was uh, uh, the heading was uh, zero five three degrees magnetic. The roll was uh, a right roll of 26 degrees. The, uh, pitch, the pitch attitude was 30 degrees, nose down, and the airspeed was 100 knots. We also correlated uh, a lot of uh, air traffic control radar hits that were uh, uh, given to us uh, from their plots. We correlated those with our flight data recorder. And um, one of the uh, things that I'd like to point out was the uh, fact that it, they had a radar hit of 1800, at 1,800 MSL, and then again at 1,000 MSL, and that the timing between 1,800 feet MSL, and MSL is mean sea level, I'm sorry, um, which is uh, height above sea level, and that's how it was measured here. Um, eight, from between 1,800 feet and 1,000 feet, the 800-foot altitude loss took five seconds. The uh, uh, on-scene... We're still in a recovery mode, uh, still uh, removing victims from the, uh, the site. At the same time, we're, re we're removing uh, significant parts of the aircraft that we can uh, remove. Uh, again, the priority is to uh, the victims. And we're removing uh, uh, significant amounts of, airplane, of the airplane parts. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do, we have a crane on site that is going to uh, lift the engines and put the engines up on the road so we can further examine those. I know that there was some uh, uh, conversation and some questions about uh, the propeller blades on this uh, airplane and whether or not anything came off in flight and those kind of things. And I'll just tell you that we have found uh, all six blades of the uh, engine number two and engine number one was consumed in fire, but we found uh, uh, fragments of four of the six blades thus far from engine number one uh, burned very badly, and they were composite blades, so they kind of melt down and, and burn up. Um, but this is indicating to us that uh, the airplane doesn't seem to have lost anything prior to impact, that it came down intact. I've got some information. Uh, we've had several discussions about uh, flying and icing, uh, recommendations made by the NTSB, and um, uh, autopilot usage and icing and those kind of things. And what I would like to do, instead of just going through uh, a couple of things I have on my notes, I've got, my head's kind of full of all of those uh, facts and figures and information, I'd like to leave that and answer your questions about those different areas. So at that time, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and open it up for questions. Yes, sir, way in the back. Yesterday you talked about how it was an autopilot, and uh, this is a fairly common occurrence, but today we're reading that perhaps it shouldn't have been an autopilot because of the weather conditions. Can you elaborate on that? Okay, this is exactly what I was talking about, um, <clears throat> and I'll, uh, I'll try to elaborate on that. Um, the NTSB, as a result of an accident that we investigated, um, recommended that in icing conditions, it might be best to disengage the autopilot and fly the airplane manually so that you have the manual feel for what might be uh, changing in your flight uh, regime because of the ice. The autopilot is keeping up with all of that. But you don't know what the autopilot's doing. You don't know that the trim is being changed. You don't know that uh, uh, it's steering differently because of uh, different uh, differences in the wing structure and so forth because of ice. So we suggest that you take it off of autopilot to uh, um, better feel the airplane and better be able to stay ahead uh, rapidly of those changes because of icing. 
So the way, but then I'd like to go back a little bit to the process of NTSB, FAA, and air carriers. We recommend to the FAA that air carriers conduct their business uh, this way with the autopilots and so forth. The FAA looks at that and makes their own determination as to how much rule and regulation they want to put out there to the air carriers. So we get in a letter writing campaign at the NTSB, we call it a mail control system, where we write them and tell them what our recommendation is. They write us back and tell us what they're going to do about it. We write back and say whether that's unacceptable or not. And this goes back and forth for quite a period of time, uh, hopefully to get the recommendation implemented. Uh, in this one situation, the FAA sees things a little differently than we do because they see that um, for some reasons uh, that you may need to be flying with the autopilot. Workload is one of those. Uh, and I, I answered the question last night from over here that uh, ask, is that normal to be flying on autopilot when you're coming into a, a weather situation? And the answer I gave was yes because it is normal, and you're encouraged to use the autopilot to help you with the workloads of these um, intense, uh, high-intense uh, weather situations that we fly into all the time. Now, the FAA is the one that makes the call. The FAA is the one that uh, is either makes the regulation or not, and we can only make the recommendation. We have no enforcement power, no regulatory power. So to say that they should not have been flying on autopilot is not correct. I mean, it's up to the airlines. It's up to the FAA. It has not been uh, you know, become a rule yet uh, that you will disengage the autopilot. Now, I will tell you that some of the air, uh, several of the airlines have changed their procedures and policies as it comes to icing. And I have, I have the... Uh, uh, aircraft or airplane flight manual for the Q400-8, which this air, uh, aircraft was. And I've got a copy of it right here, and it says the only restriction that they see the manufacturer of this airplane and that they write about is that disengage the autopilot in severe icing conditions. Well, we've seen so far of this uh, of the situation that took place on Friday the 13th that night, or Friday the 12th, I'm sorry, uh, Thursday the, the 12th um, was that uh, thus far we haven't determined that it's severe icing so um, so far we, we see that everything seemed to be normal in using the autopilot we also have some CVR data that tells us that the trim motors were not uh, tr trying to trim and keep up with things and uh, so forth so it didn't seem like it was a, uh, a real uh, a severe icing event that answer your question, sir? Thank you. Can you define severe icing for us? Well, I can give you the, the definition that they wrote in here in the, uh, in the AFM. And I'll tell you what they, they see it as, if I can find that. Flight in freezing rain, freezing drizzle, or mixed icing conditions, supercooled liquid water and ice crystals may result in ice buildup um, on the protected surfaces, exceeding the capability of the ice protection system or may result in ice forming aft of the protected surfaces. Basically, it's ice that's so severe you shouldn't be in it. And so uh, that's why these... Pro, you know, prohibitions about autopilots and so forth. So severe icing is, I mean, it's a lot of ice, and it's not what we saw here. Again, I go back to what, we, what they were told before they left, uh, that it's light to moderate icing. Yes, sir. I was going to ask for clarification. The crew reported, in their words, significant ice. Were they on the CBR, correct? They reported ice buildup on the windshield and on the leading edge of the wings. Was that before or after they began their problems? Presumably before. Yes, it was. And so if they were, what, the other day you said significant, were your words. All right. So they said significant. And you're, but you're saying that at this moment it doesn't appear that it was a severe icing event. How would you, I guess I'm trying to reconcile those two things and figure out. You're right, I did use significant. That's what we were told that came off the CVR. So they viewed it as significant. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess we're getting it. Are we splitting hairs here trying to?